On his way to work, a teacher stops at his favorite coffee house to get a cup of coffee, but it's too hot to drink at the time, so he decides he's going to wait until he gets to school, which is only five minutes away, and hopefully by then it will be cool enough to drink. So he's getting his coffee ready to go, and then he stops and thinks, hmm, should I add the cream now while I'm at the coffee shop, or shall I wait till I get to school? and add it just before I drink it. Which way is going to help my coffee be as cool as it can be when I'm ready to drink it? What do you think? Should he add the cream at the coffee shop and let the coffee and cream cool together? Or should he add, let the coffee cool by itself for five minutes and then add the cream just before he's about to drink it? Which one's going to make the coffee cooler? Or is it even going to make a difference? Well, we're going to do an investigation to see if we can find the answer to that. And it will give you an opportunity to use both of your built-in temperature sensors and to see all the options you have or some of the options that you have for viewing two different temperatures or two different measurements in a graph display. You'll also have an opportunity to practice moving around the graph display, to use one of the graph display tools, the linear fit tool, and to change one of the data properties, the, namely the measurement names. So if you're going to do this with us, you need about 600 milliliters of coffee or water, the hotter the better, 200 milliliters of cream, this teacher likes a lot of cream in his coffee, and two containers, about 400 milliliters, or that will hold at least 400 milliliters each. Of course, you also need your GLX and the two provided temperature probes. So we're going to have our GLX already turned on, and let's get started. First thing we're going to do is plug our first probe into temperature port 1 on the left side of the GLX. And then our second probe into temperature port 2. And then we'll pour our coffee, about 300 milliliters in each container. There's one. And there's the other one. And then we will put our probe from port one into the first container. And our probe from, oops, make sure it gets in there and stays. And then our probe from port two into the second container and make sure it stays in there. Oh, we're good. And we'll go ahead and start collecting data by pushing the start button in the middle of the GLX. And let's add our cream to our first container, about 100 milliliters. And immediately, you see the temperature start to decrease. It's kind of hard to see, so let's push the auto scroll button, F1, to have all that data fit on the graph correctly. And I know what you're thinking now. You're saying, what about the temperature in container 2? How do we see that? Well, you can change the data that's displayed on the graph display. And you do that by pushing the giant check mark in the middle of the GLX push that, and you see now that a number of items on the screen become highlighted. These are called hot spots. The shaded one is the active hot spot, and I can move through those hot spots with the arrow key. You see that they include my y-axis temperature, or my y-axis measurement, <coughs> my x-axis measurement, my y and x-axis unit, and the run number. So let's use the arrow key to get to the measurement we want to change, and that's temperature. When I'm ready to change it, and I have that as my active hotspot, you push the check mark. Now I've got a menu of items to select from. Currently, the selection is temperature 1, which is the temperature display from temp port number 1. We want to see the temperature from the port number 2, so we use the arrow key to move down to that and push the check mark again to select it. And you see now that temperature 2 is displayed on our y-axis. What's even better is that you can actually see both of these at the same time. We can change that by changing our graph display 
through the graphs menu, which can be accessed by pushing the F4 button, which is associated with the graphs menu here. You see here that we have eight items on this menu, the first five of which deal directly with what's displayed on the graph. We are interested in item number three because we want to see two measurements on our graph. So I can use the arrow to push down, which I can't do now because my menu went away. If you blabber too much, in 15 seconds it will turn off automatically. So we'll push the button again and stop talking. And instead of using the arrow key, we'll actually push the menu item number that we are interested in, which is three. And now we see two graphs on our graph display. The temperature from port two is on our left, and you see on the right-hand side the temperature from port number one. If you have trouble seeing um, differentiating from one line to the other, it might help to change the contrast of your screen. To do that, you can do it through the settings menu, but you can also simultaneously push the home key and the up or down arrows to increase or decrease that um, contrast. So if you push home, we're going to decrease just a little bit. I'm going to go back to my graph here. And you should be able to see, at least on my screen and your screen, maybe not the um, computer simulated screen on the right of this display, but you should be able to see that um, run number one is slightly on, on the right hand side, the run the actual run name is slightly lighter shaded than the one on the left and the the actual run should match that same shading so you've got a darker colored run and a lighter colored run and so we and we did that by adjusting our contrast okay we actually have just a few seconds before we are ready to add our cream I'm going to go ahead and this teacher got all the lights and we're going to add it now so he got there a little bit faster so let's uh, add 100 milliliters to our second container of cream. Let's see what happens. And immediately we see that the, when we add the cream in later, that the coffee is actually cooler than when we add the cream in at the coffee shop. So let's go ahead and stop data collection by pushing the start stop button again. And now what we want to do is be able to differentiate between our two runs. We want to name one of them the temperature from the shop when we added, meaning we added the, temp, the cream at the coffee shop. And we're going to call the other one school temp so one is shop temp, the other one is school temp, meaning we added the cream when we got to school. So we're going to go back to our hot spots. Can you remember how to do that? You push the check mark, is that what you said? The check mark to access your hot spots. And we push it again when we have the active hot spot we want. And this time we're going to select data properties. And now we've got a whole new menu of items that we can change. Right now, we're only interested in changing the first item on that menu, the measurement name of that um, measurement. So to select it, again, we push the check mark. And now we can edit this. So we're going to, as I said earlier, change the name of this to, this is temperature two. So we're going to change this one to school temp. I'm actually going to use part of the, the name that exists there. I'm going to use um, just the temp part of temperature two. I push the right arrow to move my cursor to the end of that word and the backspace key to delete the last few letters of the word temperature and then the left arrow key to move the cursor to the beginning of the word and now I'm going to type in the word school. I can use my keypad now to actually type in the letters. You see that on the, the numbers of the keys there's also letters. Each successive push of the key lets you cycle through the letters on that key. And if you've ever text messaged on your phone, you're familiar with this. So we're going to change this, or add the word school. So I'm going to find my S, which is the fourth letter on the number one key. So I have to push it at least four times. It takes me through P, Q, 
again as R, and finally with the fourth, fourth push I get the S. And if I pause, it, the cursor will move over. So now we want the C, B, C, and then H, G, H, M, N, O, pause, and then M, N, O again, and then J, K, L, and your space bar is your zero key. When we are done making our changes, we can accept them by pushing OK or the F1 button. OK, guess what? We get to do that again. Can you remember all that? OK, so first thing we want to do is access our hotspots by pushing the check mark. And we need to move around to our other measurement. That's what the arrow keys are for. And you just keep pushing until you get to the hotspot you want, and then you push the check mark again. And we're going to select item number three, and we're going to change this one to shop temperature. Let's see, check mark, so we can start editing, and then uh, right arrow to get to the end of the word, backspace, over the letters we don't want, arrow over the letters we do want, and now we're going to type in the word shop. Start with the S again, P Q R S. H, M, N, O, and finally P, and then our space key again. And now we're done with that, so we say OK. And now we've got our school temp and our shop temp. And now we can actually look at this data. OK, we've got a scientific principle going on here. It's called Newton's Law of Cooling, which essentially states that the differential the temperature differential between a substance and the environment around it, the greater it is, the greater the rate of cooling of the substance. In other words, the coffee, which was hotter than the coffee and cream, cooled at a greater rate than the coffee and the cream. And if you look at your data, you can see this. You can see qualitatively that the slope of your shop temp is not as steep as the slope of your school temp for the five minute period. We can also look at this quantitatively by using our linear fit tool. If we, if we kind of get an idea of what the slopes of those two lines are with our linear fit tool, then we can see that one is actually greater than the other. It's easier to use your graph display tools when you're only looking at one curve at a time. So what we're going to do now is go turn off our two measurement mode. And you do that by the same way that we turned it on. Go back to our graphs menu, which is your F4 key. Select item number three, two measurements, to toggle it off this time. And now we are just looking at our school temp. And we can then turn on our linear fit, which you will find in the tools menu, which you can access through the F3 button, which is right under the word tools. Eight items on this menu, and the fifth one is the linear fit. When we turn that on, you see that we have a dashed rectangle, a new line on the graph, and a set of parameters for the line displayed underneath the graph. The line on the graph is the best approximate linear fit to the data points included in that dash, dashed rectangle. You see, though, that the dashed rectangle includes the entire line, and we are only interested in the five minutes where the coffee was cooling. So what we need to do is change that dashed rectangle, which we call the region of interest, so that our region of interest is only those five minutes. You see the circle at the end of the right-hand side of that line? That is the active cursor. And it can, be, it can be moved using the arrow keys. So I'm just going to move that um, active cursor a bit to the right so that our region of interest now only becomes the five minutes that we're interested in. And if we look at the slope there, the magnitude of it is a 0 0.042. Okay, so now we go back to our other run and look at the slope. Except that I don't really want to lose this linear fit information or the slope of this run. So what I'm going to do instead of changing out the measurement like we did before, I'm going to create an entire new, entirely new graph, which is another option that you have on your graphs menu. So go back to the graphs menu, and you look at item number six. There it is. That is our new graph page. 
and you see that it opens up automatically with our shop temp versus um, time, except that it needs to be auto scaled. So we'll go back to our F1 button to auto scale that. And now we can look at the um, slope of the five minute line here. And we'll go back to our tools menu, F3. Turn on the linear fit, which is item number five. And it looks like it didn't work, but it did. What has happened is our rectangle is just essentially one point. Our active cursor is actually sitting on the other end of the rectangle. So if we just move it, you see now that we're starting to get a rectangle and, and we have a line. And if I push the down arrow on my keypad, it automatically moves it to my active cursor to the end of the run, except that I still don't have the whole five minutes that I need. I need to move the rectangle out a little more to the left side. So um, what I need to do is move my active cursor to the other side of that rectangle. So you, you actually can do that, again, through your tools menu, F3. And the last item on there, item number eight, is swap cursor. What that does is it swaps the cursor from one side of the rectangle to the other side. And now I can move it out to the left and get the approximate slope of that. There we go. Which looks like it has a magnitude of 0.02, which is less than the magnitude of the slope of our other line, which shows us that it cooled at a slower rate than the coffee alone cooled. So what do we tell our colleague? Wait till you get to school to add the cream to your coffee.